When you open up a computer case, the largest and most important circuit board you'll see inside is what we call the motherboard. This single piece of hardware acts as the foundation upon which the entire computer is built, connecting the processor, memory, storage devices, graphics card, and countless other components into one working system. But have you ever stopped to wonder why it's called a motherboard? It's an odd name when you think about it. Why mother? Why not just main board or central board? Well, the story of how this term came about combines the technical evolution of computers with a clever use of metaphorical language that makes sense once you break it down. Let's explore right here on History of Simple Things. The word motherboard first starts to make sense when we look at how it functions in a computer. A motherboard is not just any circuit board. It is the main hub, the central nervous system, the piece of hardware that makes sure all the other parts can communicate with each other. In other words, it provides the essential support system that allows the rest of the machine to work. Early engineers described it as the main board because it was the largest circuit board inside a computer. But as technology advanced, the language shifted. Over time, the word mother became attached to it, highlighting its role as the central nurturing figure that gives life to everything else in the system. The mother in motherboard is more symbolic than literal. Just as a mother in a family nurtures, organizes, and connects the members together, the motherboard in a computer connects all the components and allows them to work in harmony. Without it, the CPU couldn't talk to the memory, the storage devices couldn't be accessed, and the graphics card would be useless. The motherboard doesn't do all the heavy lifting by itself. It doesn't store the data or perform complex calculations alone, but it ensures that every other part has a place and a pathway to do its job. It creates order out of chaos, which makes the metaphor of a mother very fitting. Another reason the term stuck is because of the existence of something called daughter boards or expansion cards. These are smaller boards that plug into the motherboard to extend its capabilities. For example, a sound card, a network adapter, or even a modern graphics card can be thought of as daughter boards. They rely on the mother to provide the essential connection to the rest of the computer. This family-like naming convention reinforces the idea that the largest board is the mother and the smaller attached boards are the daughters. Without the mother board, the daughter boards can't function. The whole naming system starts to sound a bit like a household where the mother is central and the children branch out to handle specialized tasks. Historically, the term mainboard actually predates motherboard. In the early days of personal computing, especially during the 1970s and 1980s, engineers often referred to the main printed circuit board inside the computer as a mainboard. You'll still see the term mainboard used in some parts of the world, especially in Asia and among some manufacturers. However, motherboard became the more popular term in English-speaking regions because it captured not just the idea of centrality, but also the sense of dependency, the way all other parts depend on it for power and communication. The name motherboard simply had more character, and so it stuck in popular culture outpacing the more technical-sounding mainboard. It's also interesting to consider how the language of technology often borrows from human and family-related metaphors to make complex ideas easier to understand. Computers are built on highly technical concepts involving electricity, logic gates, silicon chips, and binary data. But most people don't speak in those terms. By using metaphors like motherboard, daughterboard, slave drive, or even mouse, 
engineers found ways to make the abstract world of electronics more relatable. Instead of saying primary printed circuit board that supports all peripheral components, it's simply called a motherboard. It's friendlier, more intuitive, and easier to teach to a wider audience. The rise of the IBM PC in the 1980s helped cement the name even further. As personal computers started making their way into homes and offices, the terminology that IBM and other major companies used quickly spread into common usage. Manuals, repair guides, and technical communities began referring to the main board as the motherboard, and hobbyists adopted the term with enthusiasm. By the 1990s, motherboard was the universally accepted name, and it remains the standard today, even though the technology inside computers has changed dramatically. When we think about it, the name also reflects the growth and evolution of computers themselves. Early machines were massive, often filling entire rooms with separate components wired together. There wasn't always one central board to tie everything together, but as technology miniaturized and the architecture of computers became more standardized, the idea of having one central hub became crucial. That central hub naturally earned a name that implied importance and authority. Calling it the motherboard gave it not just technical meaning, but symbolic weight. And yet, despite how common the word is now, it still surprises people when they stop to think about it. We don't call the car's engine control unit a mother engine. And we don't refer to the main electrical panel in a house as a mother panel. But in computing, the metaphor stuck because it perfectly captured the sense of connection, dependency, and centrality that the main board provides. It's a rare example of technical jargon that feels poetic, and it has lasted for decades without needing to be replaced. So the next time you look inside a computer and see that large, complex board filled with slots, chips, and circuits, you'll know why it's called a motherboard. It's not just the biggest board inside the case. It's the one that gives life, structure, and order to every other part. It is the mother that makes sure all the children, the daughter boards, and the connected components can thrive. And that's why, in the world of technology, the term motherboard is more than just a name. It's a metaphor that has stood the test of time, bridging the gap between cold, technical engineering and the way humans naturally make sense of the world. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our other bingeable channels. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.